Welcome everybody to this video from Learn Electrics. Lighting circuits probably cause more confusion than any other circuit. They are very easy to wire up, but you must follow a logical method when working on them. There are two or three different methods in use, and today we will concentrate on the three-play method as shown in the Electrician's Guide to the Building Regulations, the book that is shown on this slide. During this video, we will talk about switches, how the switches work, and then move on to ceiling roses and the actual wiring of a one-way lighting circuit. So, let's begin. Here, we have a single gang light switch. Single gang, there is only one switch in the accessory. The reverse side of the switch is showing this to be a two-way switch. But, we are talking about one-way lighting, you say. Well, don't worry. A lot of electricians will buy just two-way light switches and use them for one-way lighting as well as two-way lighting, and we will explain this in a few minutes. On this reverse side, you will see three holes, with one hole that is quite obviously separate from the other two. This is the common terminal and it will make sense soon. Bottom left is terminal L1, and bottom right is terminal L2. So we have common L1, L2. Some manufacturers use different numbering terminology. Let us look at what happens inside the switch. You can see that the little sketch relates to our actual switch for the positions of the terminals. In this position, electricity can flow between the common terminal and terminal L1. There is a physical metallic connection between them inside the switch. If we operate the switch to the second switch position, the metallic link inside the switch will change to position L2, but the common connection does not change. Hence the word common. It is common to both L1 and L2. And now, electricity can flow between common and L2. Here we are showing a two-gang switch, two switches in one accessory. And you will come across these quite often. The reverse of the two-gang switch shows that it is made up of two independent switches. The operation of each switch is completely separate from the other switch. Apart from being in the same plastic moulding, there is no physical or electrical connection between them. Now, as we mentioned a moment ago, a lot of electricians will use a two-way switch for one-way lighting, and this is perfectly acceptable. A two-way switch will function perfectly as a one-way switch. We only need to connect the conductor wires between the common terminal and terminal L1. In this drawing, we have started with a switch in the position common and L2. This means that electricity cannot get to the terminal L1, and so the switch is in the off position. Electricity cannot flow, the switch is off, the lights are off. By operating the switch, we connect the common to L1. This allows electricity to flow from the common to terminal L1, and the switch is in the on position. The switch is on, electricity flows from common to L1, the lights are on. Of course, we could choose to connect between common and L2, as long as one wire goes to common. The next part takes place inside the ceiling rows, so let's look at that next. Inside the ceiling rows are three blocks of brass terminals. One block with two holes and two blocks with three holes. You can see the eight holes in the plastic on this photograph. Using the method shown in the electrician's guide, we always connect the conductors to these three blocks in a certain order. Follow this method and the lights will work. This drawing shows the ceiling rows and we have coloured the terminals to make it clearer for you. The outside block of two, coloured yellow here, 
is called the switch block. The middle block, coloured red, is known as the live loop or just loop. And finally, the outside block of three, coloured blue, is always neutral. Always follow this sequence. On the next few pages, we will show how electricity flows around the circuit and the ceiling rows with a lamp that is shown on each slide will use the same connections that we have just discussed. One important piece of safety advice. We are using standard twin and earth cable to connect between the ceiling rows and the switch. This means that the blue wire that returns from the switch to the ceiling rows is not neutral. It is not neutral. It is a phase wire and it can have 230 volts on it. Because it can have 230 volts as a phase conductor, we mark it with brown sleeving or brown tape at both ends to help identification. So, let's turn the MCB on and we can see that electricity can flow from the terminal marked L at the top left to the ceiling rows, the loop block. We have shown electricity being present with yellow dots. Electricity, voltage, flows from the live loop along the brown wire to the common terminal of the switch. Because the switch is in the off position, in other words the contacts are open, electricity cannot flow any further and the lamp is off. If the switch is turned on, the contacts are closed. Electricity can flow from the common terminal to the terminal with the wire in it. Now, electricity travels along the blue phase wire to the switch block in the ceiling rows. Voltage flows through the lamp and returns to the consumer unit along the neutral conductor. Because the electricity can now complete its full journey, the lamp will light up. The lamp will be on. An important note, if the electricity cannot complete the full circle from the live terminal in the consumer unit and back to the consumer unit on the neutral terminal, then no current will flow and the lamp will not come on. Neutral is just as important as the other live conductors. So, once more, with the switch open, the electricity stops at the open switch and the lamp is off. Close the switch and the whole circuit is now complete. Electrical current can flow from the consumer unit through the switch, through the lamp and back to the consumer unit along the neutral wire. The lamp comes on. Let us move on now and see where we connect the wires in the ceiling rows. And here is our basic ceiling rows. The twin and earth loop cable marked L here comes in from the consumer unit. The brown wire goes to any one of the holes in the loop block. The neutral goes into any one of the holes in the neutral block. Now connect the switch wires. The twin and earth cable is marked S for switch here. The brown in this case is connected to a hole in the loop block and the blue with brown sleeving is connected into a hole in the switch block. We will have two earths as well sleeve them separately and connect them together in the earth terminal. Do not leave them as bare copper. And finally, if not already in place, connect the two lamp wires. One wire into the empty hole in the switch block and the other into a hole in the neutral block. If the lamp is a standard UK bayonet fitting, then the order does not matter. But with Edison screw lamp holders, the middle pin on the lamp holder should go to the switch block and the outer shield of the lamp holder goes to the neutral block. And there we have it, one way lighting. Press the save button if you want and you can save this video for later review. Practice makes perfect when wiring lighting circuits. Take it in steps and it all works out okay. In another video we will look at two way lighting where a light is controlled by any one of two switches. A good example is upstairs and downstairs lighting, or lighting in rooms with two access doors. And another video looks at intermediate switching. How do you make a light come on and go off 
from any one of three, four, five or more light switches. Useful in long corridors or rooms with several access doors. Watch out for these. Thank you for watching this video from Learn Electrics. You can access these videos by typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar. If you click on subscribe below, you will have access to all our videos and you will not miss our next weekly upload. Thank you once more and we look forward to seeing you again very soon.